Well, hello. Uh, last night I uh, got done with work and I drove up to Dickinson because I had Friday off. Uh, I had the specific intention of watching Dune 2. So uh, Thursday night I figured it wouldn't be quite as crowded. And it wasn't. The theater was pretty darn empty. But uh, I want to talk about it. Now, a couple of years ago when the first Dune movie came out, I talked about that. And... Uh, did it, you know, right after seeing it, I, uh, I needed sleep. I, I wrote a lot of notes and then, oh yeah, I was getting tired. So I had to finish it this morning, but I'm in a motel. I'm going to try to do this in one take because I'm on my cell phone, but that's my lovely view out the window. <laughs> so, um, I'll probably have to use my reading glasses too. I thought about, you know, just waiting till I get home recording this as a driving video, but, uh, Anyway, so this won't quite have the initial excitement that it had the first time I did a Dune movie, but hopefully it'll offer something to you. But I have copious notes, and uh, I'm going to need a little help to read them. <laughs> so, um, but again, I will try to do this with no spoilers. Uh, I went and watched the, uh, yes, these are my microphone. Uh, I went and watched the uh, 620 showing. In Dickinson and got out about nine o'clock so yeah I was kind of late to drive back home because it's another hour and a half to get home and uh, dark oops <laughs> yeah that's gonna happen because I, I can't really edit on the cell phone but anyway yeah and I left my uh, gimbal at home so great but anyway but largely empty theater so that was a little awkward but that's okay so Dune 2 largely follows the rest of Frank Herbert's Dune, and it sets it up for his subsequent book, Dune Messiah. Um, I, one thing that came up in this is it compresses the timeline. Uh, I'll just say, Alia has been a controversial character in several, in the last two adaptations. Um, I liked how they found their way around it this time, but still included her as a character. And Alia is present in this, and she's going to be important in Dune Messiah. So, yeah, I liked how they handled her. Um, and by compressing the timeline, of course, they were able to do that. If you haven't watched the movie, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But the short version is she is Paul's younger sister. I liked uh, the actor for Paul in uh, the first movie. I thought, you know, in the book, Paul, the character, is small. He's 15 years old. The actor, of course, is in his 20s, I think. Um, but, you know, is young enough looking that kind of evokes that same sense. Um, doesn't work quite as well as a leader of people uh, as he's supposed to be in this book, you know, a little more age on him would have helped, you know, the way he got, although I guess in reality, he did get those two years of aging that he would have had in the, <laughs> in the book, so there is that, but, uh, you know, he, he's a good actor, I think he does the role well, he just didn't quite look like, uh, the inspiring leader of men, um, Chani was a little was much more interesting in this movie. You know, the first movie she she's basically a, Pow! you know, a voice he'd see in or not see hear in visions and stuff, but she didn't have much of a role. Um, th this one she uh, was actually the voice of uh, reason and morality. And you have to remember in the story Dune, although we are sympathetic to Paul, he is not the hero. Um, she she took over some of the roles. I'm going to rest my right arm and now use my left arm. Uh, she took over some of the roles of kind of his conscience uh, that the lady Jessica had played in the book. It's morning. I need that. But uh, anyway, I liked her. She, she, she took on a much more active role. She thought for herself. Uh, she was an important character in the movie. Uh, the lady Jessica, Paul's mother, also took on more of a role in this movie than she had in the book. Um, it actually explains some of the things that you see in later books in the series. Um, she became almost sinister in this movie. Um, you know, she very much manipulated the Fremen. Uh, 
Paul tried to escape her manipulation. <laughs> he, he couldn't because of, you know, situations, because I'm trying to keep this relatively spoiler-free. But, you know, that was a... That was interesting. You know, it was there in the books, but not to this extent. Uh, Stilgar was a fatherly influence, and it's definitely fleshed out in this movie, but he, he makes the same transition to follower as he did in the book. And uh, it's more Chani rather than Stilgar, or I'm sorry, rather than Lady Jessica who objects to this. Um, and, and they brought a lot more religious fundamentalism into this that wasn't so explicit in the book. Uh, the villains are good. Uh, of course, the, the Baron Vladimir Harkonnen is intelligent, he's menacing, and he takes over every scene he's in, uh, played by Stellan Skarsgård. Um, the movie did get rid of the homosexuality he had in the book, and uh, yeah, in one scene he does casually murder two women. Uh, and that brings me to one problem. I there's the Harkonnens do quite a lot of very casual murder of their people, and uh, you know, I guess is there a society where that's normal? I I don't know. I've never heard of it, but that doesn't mean it's not out there. But I I just always struggle with that. You know, they do it in movies. It's shorthand for oh, this is a really bad person. Look, he just slit this lady's throat for fun. <laughs> you know, that that was kind of how I felt like they were using that. Uh, the Beast Raban actually gets to do something in this movie, which he really didn't in the first one. Um, we get to see his brutal nature when he has the power or he has the upper hand, and we get to see his fear and his cowardice when he doesn't. Um, and there's, of course, some new faces. Uh, Christopher Walken appears as the Padishah Emperor, Shaddam IV. Uh, he, he plays the role of a very powerful man who whose power is fading as well. Um, he, he even looks the part. You know, I uh, I will miss, I will admit, Jose Ferrer in the 1984 version. He, he was quite an entertaining emperor. I, you know, I always enjoyed his classic line, bring in the floating fat man. Except he says it in his own voice, which is uh, quite good. Um, but Christopher Walken brings the right energy to the character. You know, he's tired. He's trying to secure his position for his family and for the future. Um, worried about maintaining his grip on power. Um, it, it just worked out very well. His, his daughter, Princess Irulan, cast a large shadow in the book... Uh, quotes from her writings are used to begin almost every chapter of the book. But she has a very small actual role in the book. In this movie, she is well aware of what's going on, and she serves kind of as an advisor to her father, and as a confidant to the Bene Gesserit Reverend Mother Gaius Moachim. Uh, her choice of clothing, okay, it often looked like feminine chain mail, can I say that? Um, it was a bit strange, but, you know, to be fair, this movie did sometimes verge on being the, the world of silly hats, just like the miniseries. Um, but then again, hats are often part of ritual clothing, and, uh, I can name several large organizations, even some religious organizations where you're like, Oh, look, the assembly of silly hats. So, uh, yeah, let, let's just leave it there. Um, I've been putting off the one I was most worried about, Fade Rautha. Now, Fade is the Baron's nephew and is the heir apparent to the Harkonnen house. Um, to get a good actor for this, we needed somebody who could be very physical. He had to be a very skilled fighter. He had to be a brutal killer. And he had to be very attractive, capable of being charming, and he had to be an equal to Paul. So when I heard that Austin Butler was cast, I was a little bit worried, and I will admit I've only seen him as the half-elf uh, Will Olmsford in the Shannara Chronicles, which was a, <laughs> a 
um, what's a good word for it? it? It's a fantasy series that was made for a younger demographic than I'm in. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah, based on the Terry Brooks series of novels. Um, I knew the actor wouldn't have his, you know, his silly pointed ears in Dune, but my impression of him was, you know, in that show he was a pretty boy who lost his shirt all the time. Um, now, I thought in, in Dune, they used his looks to good effect. And <laughs> let me explain that. He, uh, he's weird looking. Um, not, not the actor. I mean, Fade Routh in the movie, Dune, is weird looking. Um, <clears throat> so all the Harkonnens in the movie Dune are bald and pale. Um, he is bald and pale in this movie. He has no eyebrows. This is all bald, although apparently he did not shave his head for the role. He used a double skull cap. Um, he also had black teeth, which was interesting. <laughs> Minor a little coffee stain, but not black. Uh, and he had very, very red lips. I'm, I don't know if they put some lipstick on him or something, but it was, it was a weird contrast, especially against his super pale skin. Um... His voice was totally changed from what it was in the, uh, the Shannara Chronicles. And, uh, you know, the accent or voice slipped once or twice, but it was actually quite menacing. And apparently he based it on Stellan Skarsgård himself. And I guess this actor does like to try different um, voices. Like he played Elvis Presley and had to get a speech therapist to help him undo his Elvis Presley accent when he was done playing that role. Um, I've only seen him in the Shannara Chronicles, so... <laughs> uh, but anyway, so poor, anyway, I'm making such a big deal out of this because poor casting would have really damaged the movie. Uh, he had to be menacing. You know, Sting in the 1984 movie with his little metal Speedo, yeah, really, watch the movie if you don't believe me. He <laughs> He wears a metal Speedo. Um, was definitely believably psychotic, but not particularly menacing. The guy in the miniseries was... Okay, not really memorable in any way. <laughs> so this is a good place to talk about the look of the film. In a visual medium, you need certain visual shortcuts to identify groups. Uh, both the 1984 movie and the miniseries chose the visual shortcut of making the Harkonnens a race of gingers. So they all had red hair. Um, in the miniseries especially, some of that red hair was obviously a dye job. Not a very good one. Um, Denis Villeneuve took the tack of making them a race of gray-skinned bald people. Kind of like the Benny Tlilax, if you've read the books. <laughs> and that includes the women. And they all wear black. Scenes in their homeworld, Geedy Prime, at least in the outdoors, were filmed in black and white. Uh, the justification is they're under a black sun, whatever the hell that is. Uh, fireworks were explosions of black that looked like what would happen if I dipped my fountain pen in water. And everything on their world looks very industrial, which is kind of how it's described in the books. Um, because it is described as polluted and industrialized. Uh, but if you read the books, the nobility like to live in the lap of luxury, and especially like to have a lot of really, let's say, sexual decorations. So maybe to keep their reading, their you know, rating, maybe that's why they avoided that. <laughs> but it's absent. Uh, the Fremen, of course, live in the sand, so they're going to get dirty. One of the problems I had with the movie and the miniseries was that they really didn't get dirty, even though they're out there in the sand and water's at a premium. Um, sand blows in their faces and they're riding the sandworms, so of course they're wearing goggles when they ride the sandworms. Uh, you get to see them dirty. There's even a close-up of Paul's hands, you know, with dirt all over and black under his fingernails, and uh, I thought that was a nice touch. And the interiors for the Fremen looked good. Uh, I know they modeled some of it after real cities in Jordan. Um, but I'll come back to that in a little bit. 
I thought the spice harvesters were wonderful. They're very mechanical, they're noisy, and they just felt huge. I like the large chunks of metal that they're made out of, the, the enormous treads, like, like a bulldozer, and the very aggressive fingers that, I think, were the part that was harvesting the spice. Uh, the battle scenes are noisy and chaotic, and the one-on-one -on -one fights were brutal and violent and very fast. You didn't have the stylized stuff like some of the fights in the 1984 or the or the mini series. I so I appreciated that. You know, obviously they had to rehearse the fighting a lot. You can't do that kind of fighting in accident. Whoops! Just stab Timothy Chalamet. Do we need him for the end of the movie? <laughs> you know, you can't do that. So uh, they, there's obviously a lot of rehearsal and choreography to these fights. It just, The nice thing was it didn't look like it. And it's very clear that this was filmed in the desert. Obviously the sandworms are digital. Um, but there is the real sand, or maybe the special effects are getting better. But I, I know that they filmed large portions of it in the desert. And some of the desert buildings were actually from Jordan. You know, they, they used exteriors of real cities that are buried back in the mountains in Jordan. So it does feel real, or at least, you know, as real as a movie about giant desert worms living in space can be. So one question I've had, and maybe some of you can answer it, is how well people who haven't read the book would understand the movie. Um... You've got Paul's having visions. Uh, you have what's the role of the spice? Uh oh, nine percent battery left on my tablet. Um, the ecology of the planet Arrakis, doom. The political structure of the planet, or just what are the Bene Gesserit up to? You know, so I, all of that. I thought, well, I'm. How much of this is me filling in the gaps because I've read the book several times and how much of it is obvious from the movie? And how much can you watch the movie, enjoy it, and you really don't need to know the nuance of what's going on? Uh, the guild navigators played almost no visible role in the book, so I didn't really expect to see any here. Uh, but the guild was an important presence in the book. Uh, the Fremen were paying them to keep satellites out of their skies, and the guild played a vital role in the book's ending. So, yeah, there, there were some areas where I felt that they were missing. Uh, there is a lot here in the movie for those of you who want to see Paul as the hero. Uh, you'll go away contented that he avenged what was done to his family. Uh, for those who look at it in a different way as a warning about the dangers of a charismatic leader, there's a lot there for you, too. Uh, so I'll try to keep this as apolitical as I can. <laughs> Draw your own conclusions. You probably know how I vote, but anyway. I have never in my life been excited about a political candidate, or really anybody. Um, I usually vote by holding my nose and voting for the least awful candidate. I don't understand the hero worship or the blind devotion to a fallible human being. But there have been several cases in history and in the present day of people blindly following a charismatic leader and all of the damage that that can cause. And if you continue to read the Dune novels after the first one, you get to see that. Um, so, anyway, glad I went. Um, I'm in, well... Dickinson, North Dakota, on a Friday morning. So, uh, so yeah, that's how I spend my day off. <laughs> um, that. So, I'll try to find something exciting to do if I'm up here in Dickinson this early. Uh, might get the oil changed in my car. And, uh, obviously, if I'm here, I'm not at home... So I haven't yet filmed pens in use. I do have it all outlined. The pens are ready. I just need to get back to them. So I will probably film that when I get home tonight. But anyway, hope that was interesting. I hope it was useful. And if you have commented, or sorry, if you have watched Dune 2, whether you have or haven't read the books, I'd love to hear your opinion of it down in the comments. So I want to thank you for watching. 
talk to you later. Bye-bye.